name's Jeanette, and I'm with Growth Unlimited. And tonight, we're going to be talking about how I am being resilient. This is another video in my series of I'm Not Perfect. And uh, tonight, I want to talk to you a little bit about some of the things that are happening currently in my life uh, that I think are applicable to uh, what is happening to a lot of the lives of everyone in our world today. You know, it feels like everything is falling apart. Uh, we're in the middle of the third wave of the COVID-19 pandemic. It's the holiday season. All the things that we normally would do this time of year are being restricted. Uh, where, I'm where I live, we're even in a situation where we're in another shutdown arrangement for the month of December. Uh, everything that we know and hold dear as far as what normally goes on during Christmas seems to be go flying out the window. And uh, I, I talk to people from all over the country who are in the same situation, and I know other places in the world, it's, it's in some ways even worse. I just have found myself in a position where I need to start looking more thoroughly at what's going on and doing what I need to do to maintain taking control of my life. Uh, that's something, of course, all of you are aware I'm really, really big into. And it's all about what I do in my life work. I work to help people take control of their own lives. And my life is no different. You know, my mom used to tell me, when the going gets tough, the tough get going. She spent a lot of time teaching we kids that we couldn't expect life to hand us everything that we needed or wanted, that life is a process a continual effort to create the existence that we want for ourselves. This flew directly against the counsel that I was receiving at the time and the counsel that we receive in today's world where life is all about community. And there are programs designated to help us when we're in a situation where we're feeling a little bit out of control. You know, I, um, in reality, these programs really don't do that much help. They just leave you dependent and waiting for somebody else to solve the problem for you. And that doesn't work. I have found in my life that in order to have real peace and to have real success, I needed to stand up on my own two feet and figure out how to resolve the problems that I was facing and deal with them in a way that would work for me. And uh, in my professional life over the years, I have run into person after person after person who's come to me very depressed, very angry, very upset because they felt out of control. And I typically get told again and again and again, all I want is for other people to get out of my business and leave me alone and let me figure out what it is that I want to do. Well, that's what I am struggling with myself. Where I live right now, uh, as a result, partially, I believe, of the pandemic and the things that have occurred because of it. We have a situation in California where our elected officials are doing what most people in this state feel is overstepping their bounds. They're making edicts and decisions for the rest of us, telling us what we can do and can't do. As a result, uh, there are a lot of people, myself included, who have decided that living in this state is no longer something that we can afford to do or want to do. And plans, as you're all aware, have been being made for me to leave the state and move to a state in the Midwest that is going to be far more conducive 
to my being able to conduct business successfully and peacefully, as well as being much less expensive to live in than California has been. Those plans were made to happen in March. And that's what I've been working toward. But the events of the last few weeks, particularly over the last three or four weeks, has made it very, very clear to me that that necessity has moved up. Uh, with current events, uh, we are in a situation where our movements are being extremely restricted now to the point that it is uh, making it very, very difficult to do the things that I need to do on a day-to-day -day basis. And uh, the prognosis for things getting worse is here. Uh, noises have been being made that are going to restrict movement between states in the very near future. And it has reached a point with that in place. I had already moved up my move date from the end of March to the end of 2020. And with the current events, it's been moved up again even more quickly. And I actually will be leaving the state of California permanently before Christmas. Um, that's created a whole lot of pressure in other areas. Now I not only have the last minute end of year things that I need to do business-wise to take care of, I have a move that involves moving halfway across the country to, while the groundwork had been being laid, the actual physical processes necessary to make that move happen had not been done. And I am now in a position where I am having to do that and complete that move within a very, very short period of time. And it's created all sorts of pressures all sorts of stress added to the normal holiday stress that we deal with every year. So this video is designed to help you understand a little bit about what I'm doing and how I'm going back uh, to rely on some of the skills that I've worked over the years to build to help me get through this time uh, so that I can be resilient so that I can move ahead, and so that things will get better. I don't want to be in a position where I am sitting back and a victim of circumstance and not being able to change or control what it is that's going on in my life. And so what I'm going to do is share with you the things that I am doing to make that happen. First of all, everything in me wants to push back and rebel against the decisions that I've had to make. <laughs> there have been many, many days when all I wanted to do was just go back to bed and pull the covers over my head and hibernate until all this goes away. But I know fully well that that's not going to happen. And choosing that mechanism to deal with the stress I'm feeling is only going to make things worse. And so, once again, I'm following my mom's advice. When the going gets tough, the tough get going. And so, let's see what I'm doing to make that happen. There are actually six different things that I'm going into my background to draw from to make it, uh, to make this process occur the way it needs to. Uh, all of these things demonstrate the resilience that I have built over the years. And I want to talk a minute about what resilience really is. Because there are there is a definition that I found about resilience that was put out by the American Psychological Association. And just a second, let me find that because I want to read that to you. Uh, resilience is really honestly... Uh, a state of mind. It's a process and it's something that all of us have to certain extents. Uh, and it fluctuates. Our ability to be resilient fluctuates as life events occur in our lives. The American Psychological, or excuse me, this is according to the Stockholm Resilience Center, 
Resilience is a capacity of a system, be it an individual system, a forest, a city, or economy, to deal with change and to continue to develop. It's about how humans and nature can use shocks and disturbance like financial crisis or climate change or uh, illness, pandemics, emergencies like this, to spur renewal and innovative thinking. And so what I am doing to demonstrate my resilience in this process of trying to make 2021 a better year is the following. First of all, I'm sticking as much as possible to the plans that I have made in the past. Uh, I'm just changing and being more flexible in how, when, and where, where they are implemented. For example, I already decided I am moving, but the date I'm moving has changed. And the process I was going through to make the arrangements necessary has changed. However, during this time of flexibility, I am continuing to implement my master life plan, the day-to-day -day things that I do on a regular basis to make sure that my life goals as a whole are moving forward. I am maintaining my integrity. I base my decisions on whether they're going to fit my values, my goals, and my principles. And sometimes that can be difficult because a lot of times when the pressure is on and things are getting tough, the impulse and desire is to do what might be the easiest thing to do. And that's not always the best thing to do. And so I am focusing on maintaining what's important to me and living according my life according to the values, goals, and principles that I have set up. I also am tracking my progress towards the achievement of the goals that I am being forced to speed up and work on, and also the goals that are sitting in the background right now that are in the process of being done because every minute of my day is spent in the process of achieving goals, whether or not I'm focusing on that goal or not. And that happens with all of us. We are constantly evolving. We, Self-actualization, as I've said before, is a very constant thing. And we just have the choice of whether we're going to be able to uh, engage in that process ourselves. I choose to engage. And so even though I may not be directly working on a goal at a given time, the knowledge that that goal is there and uh, the monitoring of the progress on that goal is something that is a constant thing. Okay, next. I use careful, or I try to use careful and critical thinking skills uh, to make the decisions that I have to make instead of running on my emotions. I don't, uh, I always step back whenever I'm in a crunch situation where I have to make a decision and I try to look at all sides of the picture. That's what critical thinking is. I get all the information so that I have all the information together before I make the decision. I just don't automatically run off and do something because it's what I feel like doing at that given moment. Okay, third, I acknowledge that I can make mistakes. And when I make a mistake, and I make many of them, I accept the responsibility for making that mistake and I do what I can to repair the damage that I may have caused in that process. I apologize. I uh, make a, uh, a vow and use effort to avoid remaking the same mistake. And I move forward. I don't stay stuck in the process of the mistake. Uh, I try to choose to do what I know is right, even if it's uncomfortable or unpleasant for me to do. Hey, number four, I remain honest with other people. And this means that I treat them with respect, regardless of the way they treat me. One of the things that I'm noticing a lot right now is with the pressure that we are all under, Lots of people are being very, very, very demanding 
and oftentimes very rude and inappropriate in the way they're trying to get their needs met. Uh, I work very hard to avoid that myself. However, I am very clear. If something happens that is not something that is workable for me to deal with, I'm very honest about it. I'm direct, I'm straightforward, and sometimes what I say is not pleasant uh, for other people to hear. However, I do avoid name calling. I do avoid blaming. I take responsibility for me and make the decision of what I am going to do based on what I need to do in the circumstance. Here again, that fits with my values, my principles, so that I can make the best choice possible in the situation that's there. And then I follow that up with accepting any responsibility that I need to accept to implement that decision and deal with any fallout that may come as a result of it. Okay, number five. I try to be kind to me. This is a tough time for everybody. And while I do not allow myself to sit in a victim place where I look at the world as doing to me and making my life miserable, I would much rather look at, okay, fine, this is the situation the way it is now, so what am I going to do to make the change necessary to make it work for me? Uh, I have to maintain the ability to stay kind to myself and avoid harsh and unfair judgments of myself. And this is something I struggle with. Uh, I'm uh, very, very harsh with myself. I have high expectations for myself and high standards of what I expect. And so I find myself looking at the situation and having to say, wait a minute, you know, I did the very best that was possible for me to do in that situation, and I need to give myself the space necessary to handle that. So, doing all these things allow me to stay flexible. It allows me to make the changes that I need to make in my circumstance that are necessary to help me achieve the goals that I want. I then use the ability to make those changes the way they need to be made. And I'm not perfect. I do make mistakes. But trying to live my life the very best way possible is an important thing to me. And that's how I'm doing it. Thanks for watching tonight. If you have questions or comments, I would love to hear from you in the comments below. And if you're looking for ways to get yourself through the, uh, the struggles that you're facing in today's world, be sure to check out our website at www.growthunlimited.org. If you found the video helpful, please subscribe and share it with your friends. And then let me know what it is that I can do to help you. Thanks again for watching. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye now.